name is Slavo Lomniki. I'm an assistant professor of, uh, at the Department of Environmental Sciences at Louisiana State University. Our department is par part of the College of Coast and the Environment. And my research is focused mainly on air pollution and particularly emission from combustion sources uh, to the air and potentially health effects associated with it. My use of the electron paramagnetic spectroscopy dates way back, you know, when I was a PhD student. As my research has changed uh, and I start looking more into the emission in the environment, and particularly I work on the field associated with ambient air particulate matter, we are, I'm looking more on the organic radicals and I started to use uh, this spectroscopic method more in the sense of identification of different type of organic radicals that can be present on the particles. This is a very interesting aspect uh, if the EPR is the only and exclusive technique to look at the radical, uh, organic radicals. And if you want to look directly at the radicals, I would say this is the only method. Once I came to LSU and there was a broker instrument here available, so I was able to use this uh, uh, broker system, and this is where my history with broker started. It had a very big magnet very, uh, with a, a high frequency bridge, uh, quite sensitive, where we were able to measure in very small concentration of radicals. Science community has uh, found the need for a much smaller instrument that would be a bench top instrument. Uh, so once we acquired this small desktop instrument, I was actually fairly surprised you know, how uh, much we can do on this instrument. Okay? The sensitivity, um, I was a little bit afraid, you know, very surprised that we were able almost in every single instance you know, still measure our radicals present there. So the overall picture, our main focus and uh, what we are doing, we are looking at this uh, long-lived radicals that are present on the ambient air particulate matter. Okay, and of course, if we breathe the air, uh, we inhale these particles, and what's interesting, upon they become active only upon the inhalation. The first step is, you know, identification of these radicals that are on the ambient air particulates. So we are, we have identified them, we can characterize them. Image. So we have already proven that uh, exposure to particulates that contain those radicals uh, can inset asthma incidents. You know, they are very dangerous for sensitive groups. That, you know, uh, there is a cardiovascular link with the exposure to air first. The, the general mechanism we believe it's associated with is this uh, redox cycling of these radicals on the particles and ge generation of hydroxyl radicals which then uh, start the cascade of the uh, uh, different uh, signaling pathways you know, in, in the human body. In trying to figure it out, what is the health connection of these efforts, how we can warn the communities, and how the communities can protect themselves. And we are also trying uh, to create some vision or some uh, understanding for policymakers. Right now, EPA is regulating particulate pollution by just based on the mass concentration in micrograms per meter cube. And uh, what we already have found out is that uh, if the radicals are the primary or one of the main uh, reasons for the toxicity of the particles for humans, uh, this should be rather a change, not just pure mass relation, but rather the, the radical concentration on, on the particles. Because we have seen it that, for example, in some places the radical concentration on particles per unit mass is much smaller than on the others, which immediately we imply that you know the, one of the particles are more toxic than the others. And just, you know, if you refer it just to a pure mass in the air, it makes no sense.